Hey guys! Hey guys! Welcome. It's Sunday once again. I don't know about you, but this last week went by way too fast. It did go by really quick. It went by fast. Yeah, I can't even believe it. We went down to the farmer's market today and I'm like, man, I feel like I just made this drive. This is crazy. It's yeah. like already Sunday again, so it is. But I'll tell you what, today you're in for a real treat because we're going to have an awesome hangout. We've got a second camera. We're going to get some close-up action. Yeah. But we're also doing a bomb recipe that we made for the first time last week, and it's so good. Yeah, it's really good. We've kind of made things like it before, but we made some tweaks and added some special ingredients. So I think you guys are going to really like it. It is the tropical plantain salad recipe from this past week's recipes. And why we decided to do this one is because some people are kind of like plantains, what the heck are those? Or maybe you've had them at a restaurant, but you've never made them personally. So we're going to show you exactly how to make them um, in this recipe. So, yeah, that's what's so, in store. Yeah, so welcome once again. Um, what We're going to get demoing here in a second. But first, how, how are you guys doing this week? Um, let us know like what your struggles are, yeah. if you have any questions, um, and then we can answer you know, when we get toward the end of the demo. Definitely. And if you have any recipe love, some recipes you're loving, also let us know. We love to hear what you guys like. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the comment box is for on the page on the side. Leave a comment. Let us know what recipes you like. We got a really nice email, well, today actually, saying um, that... Um, someone made the deep dish pizza and that they loved it. So I'm glad. I like to hear that. Um, I love it too. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, it's good. Um, so yeah, so let's get demoing, shall oh, we? Oh, yep, let's get demoing. So the first thing is the squash or zucchini. We were at the market today, like Peter said, and um, for variety, I wanted to get some yellow and green because I thought that they would go good together. Um, the recipe calls for either small, like, diced squash or spiralized. Um, if you guys don't know what spiralized means, it, you use a spiralizer, like this guy, and you crank it, and it creates noodles. Mm -hmm. We're not going to show you that today because I, I feel like I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. Most people don't have one of these. And the recipe is great with it just diced, so um, we're going to show you how to dice it up. But if you're looking for a fun way to create um, like little chips and noodles, this thing is awesome. Yes, yeah, cool. this is a fun gadget. I don't know if we've showed you guys this before. I don't, but know, I don't think we have. Yeah, but you guys know we're, we're not big gadget people, um, but I did, ask this, I did ask for this for Christmas a few years Chris, ago. Christmas. And... We really like it. It's really fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. And it's super affordable. It's like $25 or something. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So, yeah, this is fun, but we're not going to use it today. Um, but if everybody writes in and says that they have one and they want more recipes with it, then we'll use it more. That's right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and – so instead of making the noodles, we're just going to head it, we're going to dice it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And you could use different um, types of summer squash. I know they have, like, the, the round ones and different ones. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. Any variety will do. This recipe is great because it uses up so many of the squash and zucchini. All right, so just to give you an idea of what size we're trying to go for here, I'm just going to do a quick little close-up. You can come over to mine. Come on over to Sarah's. Oops. I have a few of the yellow ones, and they're pretty pretty small. So that's just that's to give a, you an idea. That's a mine are, mine are a little bit bigger. Yeah, so we want them a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit bigger. Yep, Peter. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so go for small. Smaller is better. Um, so we're just gonna chop these guys up. 
And I like to put these in a big bowl so I have a lot of room to stir things up and add. I hate when I'm making a salad and the bowl is too small. So. These guys chop. What do you think, Peter? Do you like um, raw zucchini? Yeah, zuc raw zucchini is good. It's all about the flavor. Yeah. You know, it's all about the stuff that you add to it. Um, so with that spiralizer, we'll do um, like the zucchini noodles. And then we'll also do like a pesto to go with it. Mm. I'm a big fan of that. I think we did it a little bit too much because every time I bring it up to Sarah, she's kind of like, you know, thanks. <laughs> when you, but just, when you like just said it. that, I was like, oh, no, I yeah. hope he doesn't want yeah. that. I don't know why. I like pesto, but not on raw zucchini noodles anymore. I'm just have we, over Have that. we done like a pesto recipe? I don't. Yeah, we have actually. We've done the pesto pasta. I like it okay. on like quinoa pasta, and I also love pesto on pizza. I yeah, really we, like we have a couple that. really good pesto recipes. Yeah. Okay, I'm still going slow over here, hanging out. So, if you want to start on the tomatoes, let's get started on the tomatoes. So, are these local? Of course. Are these okay? Well, I mean, they're not. Tomatoes aren't always growing down here. No, they're definitely growing right now. Um, today in our CSA box, we got four huge tomatoes, um, and then we also got a pint of the cherry tomatoes, which I, I already ate. Yeah, I know. The whole entire thing. I know. I didn't even get to try those. <laughs> They're so good. They're like candy right now. So tomatoes are definitely in season right now in San Diego. Yeah, these are some major beefsteak ones. I love them. We also got some heirloom ones, which are good, too. Heirloom is always good. I have heard a lot of people say that they don't like raw tomatoes because of like the insides. They're kind of slimy or something. Yeah, a lot of people, they they can't get over the texture. But, um, I mean, like, yeah, like I feel like everybody's kind of like that. Like, I, I didn't like tomatoes when I was growing up. I would always give them to my sister. What? Yeah. I think I'm the strange one then because seriously, I could eat a tomato like an apple. I've never done that, but I could. I like them so much. I think the tomatoes that I liked eating, like, I, like I, I'm not afraid of tomato, you know, don't get me wrong. But I, I prefer to eat, like, the cherry tomatoes or, like, little grape tomatoes, a little bit sweeter. I feel like they have a little bit more crunch, too, and not as, like, soggy, but... I mean, I don't really care these days. It's all good. Yeah, I, I think tomatoes are super, like, versatile. I can't think of a recipe where I don't want to add tomatoes. I think, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're definitely, they're a lot more versatile, at least I, I think they are now, than I used to. I mean, Do you want to get a uh, close-up of that? Okay, let's do a close-up. Do you want to do it up? Good call. I was about to just wipe myself. There we go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, tomatoes to me are just a lot sweeter nowadays because, I mean, I don't have as much sugar in my diet. I think that's another that well, plays that's a, into that's it a good point. as well. I'm already adding mine, so you can do yours. Mer so, oh, yeah. yeah, pretty just, standard. Just chopped up standard. tomatoes. Okay, let's check out. Let's see our, our salad. It's coming along. Coming along. Oh, that's crazy. So we're using a clear bowl. It looks like it's totally just like it's sitting there. on top of there, it's a bowl. the pan. But it's not. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Seta, what does next? So next, we're gonna do some corn on the cob, some corn fresh on corn cob. on the cob. Tis the season. It's organic. Cool. Um, do you wanna add your tomatoes into the bowl? Oh yeah. Ooh, extra water. It's a little juicy. Oh man, you gotta be careful. I got my laptop just like. <laughs> Hanging out. I'm like, oh, yeah, tomato. Whoosh. All right, but I'm careful. So okay, happens when you bring your laptop in the kitchen, which I do often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if the screen goes black, you know what happened. Okay. All right, so corn on the cob. You can totally eat this raw. I have said that before, and it's awesome. It's way quicker. 
And so we're going to actually, mm -hmm. I like to do this little trick right in the middle. that gets kind of crazy. Okay, um, let's get crazy. I like to put it just like in there and just... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. i got to get a close-up. She hasn't shown me this craziness. All like right, we're just get in here. So just like go right into the bowl. Because like when you're doing this on the cutting board, it gets flying. It flies everywhere. So if you do it into the bowl, then it just goes straight into the bowl. Hmm. Easy enough. So I, and then, yeah, yeah, wow, you really skinned that thing. Right? So, yeah, go ahead and just do mine, too. I'll do another. This is this is lovely. And you can just kind of put it at the bottom so you don't have to even hold it up the whole time. And it's super fresh, super fast. And there we have it. Cool. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm getting kind of some liquid on my computer uh -oh. here. Oh, sorry, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. I think I need one of those too. Can you just yeah, let's take this one? All right. So we got the corn, the squash, the tomatoes, and it's looking good. So now. We're about halfway through the salad procedure. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn on your oven because we're going to be cooking on plantain soon. So you can turn the oven on to broil. Okay, I'm going to go turn on the oven. <laughs> and then, after that, now we have the carrot. Oh, I swung some corn, I think, in my hair. Oh, I did. Do you see it? Can you help me? It's like in the middle, maybe? No. Are you sure? Uh, no, you're okay. good. So next is the carrot. Am I good? Check my hair. <laughs> Here's one. We're going to shred that. And I actually like to use the same technique as I do with the corn <laughs> to do the carrot. So I just have a cheese yeah. grater mm. that works good. We don't even eat cheese, but we found a use for this. We still call it a cheese grater. We shred everything. Yeah. It's just nice for a different texture. So I just kind of lay it on top. Yeah. All right. Let's get a close-up of this. And then I just go to town. She goes to town. So you can see that she just she just sets it right in there. Now notice the the, the size and the shape of this cheese grater. It's it's metal. Like the whole thing is pretty much metal. It's got rubber on the side so you can have it on your countertop and it won't slip. But it's just it's nice because there's a lot of surface area. Oh yeah, wash your hands or wash for your your fingers there. Yeah, at the end um, it doesn't. I kind of like end there. I'll I, eat that. I remember I was on a hunt for like the perfect grater, and I wanted one just like this. There's so many graters out there now that are there's just like tons of plastic on them. Oh yeah. And I can't tell you how many cheese gra cheese graters I've broken in the past. Yeah, I can see that. I can see them breaking. Okay, so okay. next we are going to do the mango. mango, and I think in the recipe we use pineapple um, and Maui Gold are going on around here, and they're so great. Um, so we got that for the recipe, but right now mangoes are on sale, and we we spend a good amount of money on food. I'm sure you guys can imagine um, with the way we eat, so we do like to look out for sales and kind of. Um, switch out a few ingredients when we can, when it makes sense. So if um, pineapples are a little expensive right now and mangoes are on sale, this recipe is great with mangoes also. So we have mango. Um, and could you use kiwi too? Yeah, you could use kiwi. I wouldn't use just kiwi though. I think that um, the mango and the pineapple have a really sweet, strong flavor, yeah, that's whereas true. the kiwi would be very subtle. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it would be a nice addition. Cool. So mango, I'm sure you guys know how to cut the mango if you don't. Um, we like to think of it as it having two cheeks. So um, there's a pit in the middle and then on the side, oh, oh, oops, sorry. Sorry, yeah, I know, I just did do uh... On the side there's two cheeks. And so you're going to cut one cheek off and then you're going to cut, I'm going to come down here. My kind of word's a little dirty. And then you're going to cut the other cheek off. 
Everything's kind of backwards here. Okay. And then I'm just going to make a little grid. And then I'm going to go the opposite way. And then I'm going to do that with this one. And be careful if your knife is sharp not to cut through and yeah. cut your hand. Yeah, you'd be surprised, though. The knife doesn't go through as easily as you might think. I was going to say, I, I've never cut my hand. And then... I've tickled myself, but... You're just going to scoop it out. Yeah, look how easy that is. And I'm going to then put it in the bowl, but I was going to show you. There's here, usually... You can here, fold that other one inside out. So this will give you, like, a... Like a you an always, illustration, so you can see that they're just this. one. Oh, but this way you can see the cubes. Oh, Isn't yeah. that nice? Okay, yeah. I like that. No, it's good, and kids <laughs> really like it too. Um, uh, you can stick like little things and make it look like a little bug. Cool. Food art, anyway. Okay. And so then, one more thing I wanted to show you is there's usually some extra um, on the sides. Okay, so it looks like we're cutting off the peel on the outside, and then yeah, you don't have to do that. I actually, I actually started to do that, and then I realized that I actually never do that. So you can do that, cut out the peel, and then you can chop this into cubes. Um, but another thing that you can do that I actually do most of the time, oh, this one is kind of, this one actually doesn't have. Sometimes it's tricky going around that seed. Yes. So then no, normally what I do for this guy is I'll just use a spoon, and I'll just scrape it along and get whatever is left and then I'll cut it into cubes. So yeah. Cool. That is the mango. Easy. Easy. So I'm gonna add the mango into the bowl. And Peter, if you want to show them how we make our quick and easy guacamole. Quick and easy guacamole. Okay, so I'm basically just gonna cut them open, pull out the pit, get all the avocado ness on the cutting board, mash it up. And wait, do we even have the other ingredients for... I think I must And then I'm going to take a trip into I'll the kitchen and, and then I'm going to come back and throw it together. I'll run and get this stuff. All right. Okay, so we're just going to go all the way around. And then we're just going to go ahead and pull out the seed. I'd like to just give it a little whack. Pull out the seed. And this is so easy and so quick. We all we we eat guacamole all the time, probably like two or three times a week. And yeah. we always just make our own just because it's yes. so fast. The only time we'll buy it when, when we're out is because we're out and we want it. It's usually like a snack or like a craving and we're not yeah. going to be home for a while. But it's crazy expensive. It's like eight or nine bucks. It's way just, too much. Yeah. And it's never, it's never as good. Yeah, it always has like preservatives in it and just makes it taste kind of funky. Yeah. Funky yeah, funky. I mean, it's pre packaged, so you don't know how long it's been sitting there. Yeah, it's just not as good. One thing that we do buy a lot from the store is salsa. Guilty. Um, that just, isn't really something you just like throw together. Yeah, the really good stuff I feel like is roasted and then like, or like the tomatoes are cooked. Um, and it can be pretty pricey to make your own salsa, and I mean, the store salsa is a good price, so mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like a convenience thing, really. Um, so, but today we actually, we made some green salsa yesterday, and so, um, yeah, that's we're going to really be good. using that. Yeah, we actually have that right here. All right, how's it going, Pete? Good, man, one of these, the, uh... It's hard to, to, to get it out. It's getting oh. stuck to the outside. Um, it's okay. I'm going to scrape it out. You know, it's, it's interesting. We've been getting avocados in our CSA box, and they're so different from the ones that you would get at the grocery store. Um, Why do you think that is? Well, so a few things kind of come to mind. Is like um, they. I, I think that both the grocery store and the CSAs, in the farms, pick them before they're ripe. Um, but I think that when we when we get them home, they're ripening on our counter versus when at the store mm -hmm. they're ripening in like cold storage. Mm, um, interesting. I don't know. That's one theory. Um, what about what do you do? You have any insights or I think, ideas? I think that's that's a pretty good theory. Yeah, for sure. I mean, because there is a big difference between um, just 
just where the food travels when you get it from the farmer versus the grocery store. So the weird thing about the avocados is um, we'll have them for like a week and they'll still be they'll they'll be still be green, but they'll be they'll be like soft. They won't turn that brown color, or they'll still be hard, but they'll actually taste good. They'll taste like they're ripe, yeah. but they're still hard. Yeah. So it makes it like so confusing to check. Like our our way of checking to see if an avocado is ripe is, is totally different when they're from the box. For sure. Um, so. All right. So. All right. So you're right now. It up. Right now, I'm mashing it up. Okay. If you want to show the, them a close up, I can add these ingredients for you. Okay. Kind of show them. Okay. Let's do a close up. All right. Okay. So here is my avocado ness. Okay, so it's just two avocados that are mashed up, and now we're gonna add some garlic powder. It's just garlic powder, um, and we're not shy with our garlic. We love garlic, and then a little bit of sea salt, and that is it. And then we just kind of fold it in there. And Eureka. And if you have lime, a little lime juice is good. And you could get crazy. You could add onion and peppers. But this is our quick, you know, five minute, not even five minute, like two minute little guacamole recipe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, there you have it. There you have it. I'm just going to put it in this bowl right here. Yeah, there's here. so many ingredients that you can add to your guac. Yep, you could even add this mango to the guac. That would be so oh, yeah. good. If you ever want to get kids to eat guac that that don't like guac or add fruit. Uh, yeah, when in doubt, add fruit. We've done Ooh. so far. We've just done mango and peaches. Peaches are good. All right. Okay, now, so, now wow, main, we are really coming along. The main attraction, what you guys are so curious about, the plantain. So, what the heck is a plantain? You're probably wondering. This is a plantain. It's a banana's brother. Really? I thought it was its cousin. I, they look so similar. No, I'm just I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, so this is a plantain. It's so similar to a banana. How you can tell the difference is it's wider. And it is, um, it's a lot thicker. The skin is really thick on a plantain. It starts to get black spots. That's how you know if it's ripe. And yeah, we a lot of times you'll see them at the store, and they'll be like so hard. Yeah. And you kind of, you just gotta wait till they get really, really soft. Yes. So key. Key. So what you do is you are gonna cut it open and then slice it into strips. You're going to put it on a cookie sheet that's oiled, and then you're going to put it in the oven under broil, and you're going to do it for three to five minutes. You have to watch it very carefully to make sure it doesn't burn. Then you're going to take it out, flip it, three to five more minutes, take it out, cut it, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So. But it sounds simple, doesn't it? It's very easy. So I think who's cutting board is cleaner? Uh, Maybe mine. Yeah, let's do yours. Let's do mine. This is getting wild and crazy. I think we need like a garbage or something. You know what here. I just saw? What? That is so cool. That Okay, I first saw it and I was like, that's not very cool. But then it is cool. Rachel Ray came out with these um, things for your counters that are like the garbage bowl. So you can put all your scraps and then compost it or toss it out. Um, and so it's just like this cool bowl that has like different colors on it. It's really bright. And you can just like use it to like keep... I mean, you could just use a regular bowl. That's yeah, why well, would thinking. you just use a regular bowl? Because it looks cool. Oh, because it's Rachel Ray. Okay. Okay. But, but that's what we could have right now. That would be very helpful. Okay. That's so do you want to get the close-up? Okay. Let's get the close-up. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So let's see if I can get this over here. This is so, always tricky with the siding. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna go around this side like okay. that. Look at that. You like that better? Yeah, I like that. Because you're you're kind of like a right handed woman here. Okay, so I'm going to cut it open. Right? And you can peel it from there. 
Oops, do I need to see down here? Um, and the skin is really thick, you'll see. And there you have it. It kind of looks like a banana. It gets kind of soft as it gets ripe. So you want it a little bit soft. Then I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm just going to cut it in half. And there's what the inside looks like. And then from there, I'm just going to cut it in strips. And they don't have to be full strips. They can just be pieces. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to work with. Um, it's like a little bit slimy and soft in places. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, so as you can see, this is not like a regular banana. This thing's pretty firm. Sarah's really grabbing onto this thing and, and slicing it. And I mean, if this were a regular banana, the whole thing would just be just a pile of mush at this point. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're using like a serrated knife here. And so it makes it a lot easier to slice it. Um, so That's just, uh, you know, watch the little fingers here when you're you're working it. We haven't found like a um, like a definite technique for for slicing these things. So I mean, but but the end result is basically just going to be pieces. So you just want to slice it up. Yeah. So, so it looks broil it. it looks kind of butchered right now, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. then. Oh, okay. Let's just... You want to keep that camera? Yeah, why not? Then we're going to have our cookie sheet and some coconut oil. And we're just going to put the coconut oil on the pan. Voila. And then just lay these flat. And it's okay, different sizes, cause, because we are going to be chopping them up. Um, the thing that you want to note is you want to keep kind of consistent thickness, or else some might get done um, faster than others. So they all kind of have the same amount of. Um, thickness to them. Just kind of lay them out. And then yeah. we are going to put them in the oven. Okay, so we're going to make our way over to the, the oven. oven. And then when oh, they're oh. done, they are going to look like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Flash forward. Yep. Whoa, Peter and Sarah, you guys are good. So, um, one thing to know, I kind of walked away. Oops. And this one got a little bit crispy. Yes. Note so, to self. So, <laughs> yeah, so, plantains, are, they're definitely tricky. So, yeah. My whole thing is like, oh, man, like, I just, like, do not even want to leave the kitchen when those things are in there. Cause... So, you're going to let them cool a little bit. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, so yeah, so the, after they're done, you're going to want to let them cool, and then you're going to chop them up and just get them in kind of like bite-sized pieces like that. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you're going to put them in the salad. You throw them in the salad. Easy breezy, guys. Put them in the salad, and it looks like, okay, so here's the salad that we just whipped up. Okay. There's our guac. Mm-hmm. Right on the spot. Here's the salsa. We actually just shared this recipe um, in our Facebook group the other day. Oh yeah, someone asked for it, so we put um, it up there. Um, this is just kind of on the house. Sarah's like, man, like, I gotta help these people out. They got all these tomatoes. What are they gonna do with them? Mm -hmm. So there you have it. We made a green salsa recipe. And we're just gonna finish putting these last little. Plantains in here. Whoa, look at this mess that we've made. Hey, hey, don't show oh, them that. Oh, don't show them the mess. Gosh. we got to have a Rachel Ray bowl so you can't see it. Uh -huh. That's what the pros do. All okay, right. we're back. And plantains are great in the salad, but they're also so good just in guacamole. Uh, you can just like take them oh, yeah. just, just like this, like dip oh, them oh. in like this. And and then they can eat it like this. Yeah, you can do long strips, mm. lay them out on like one or two baking sheets. You can get like, you know, two mm. or three plantains and you do them in strips and then they're, they make these awesome plantain chips. And they're way healthier than the deep fried plantains that you probably get at a restaurant. Those are amazing, but these are way healthier and taste just as good. Peter, so. I think you are the one who taught me how to make these plantains. Really? Yeah. 
You, I swear. Oh, I kind of remember that. I remember that. What was it? Maybe like a year and a half ago. It was a while ago. And we, ever since I've been hooked. Every, we kept hearing about plantains, and whenever we would go over to the plantain section, there was this Whole Foods super close to our house. We'd go down there, and they'd always be so hard, but they would still just sell out. So, like, it's like you would never see them there. There must have been somebody else that was, like, a plantain, just, like, obsessed person. Mm. So I remember a couple times we had to buy them, and then you just let them sit. You're, you know, you're all excited about having, like, plantain chips. Mm. But you buy them, and then you have to just, like, you know, let them sit on your counter, like maybe put them in a bag or something. And then it was, like, days and days and days until they would ripen. And it was really rare to see, like, ripe plantains. Next time you see ripe plantains, buy them. Yeah, we actually don't have that problem anymore. We don't have, yeah, yeah, not down here. Yeah, I think because we're so close. Um, I we, don't know why, but we get them a lot. Um, so that's a good point to say that where you can find them is at your health food stores, and they're usually with bananas, which kind of makes it confusing, or like the tropical section. The tropical like, section with the guava and the pineapples and the kiwi pineapple. and the passion fruit. Yeah. And the dragon fruit. Soon, Dragon Soon. Fruit. Okay, guys, so we have been talking your heads off, so we're sorry about that. We have our finished product here, um, and, yeah, it's finished yummy. Products. Do you want to see a picture? Okay, why Look not? Close, one more. Because we're in the spirit. Okay. Oh, this is good lighting, too. Um, yeah. And so we got the everything at the bottom, kind of the squash, the tomatoes, the carrots, you can't really kind of see, kind of see. Um, and we're going to serve this with guacamole and salsa on top. Yeah. So there Looking you have forward it. to it, Super yes. Super easy. So easy, so quick. You guys can do this. I want to hear about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Um, it really is a pleasure of ours to serve you guys and to make these videos and um, so far so good. I feel like every week you know we get a little bit better so um, yeah I'm excited. This recipe is super good though. Um, I mean if you want replay it, make it at your own, make it in your own kitchen yeah, um, but seriously make this recipe ASAP this week for sure. Yeah, and let us know what you think. Yeah, it's so good. Do you guys do any additions? I know a lot of you like to do your own spin on the recipes, and I love that. Please do. Um, and tell us about them, because maybe yeah. we want to try them, too. Yep, yep, for sure. All right, guys, have a great week. Okay, bye.